For years, Notion has been the tool everyone swears by for keeping their work and life organized. But scroll through user reviews and you'll notice some repeating complaints. People talk about how tricky it is to learn, how it slows down when you add too much data, and how the offline mode just isn't reliable. It's almost like the more it tries to do, the harder it becomes to use. But the weaknesses for some can be the strengths of others, and that's why Obsidian is suddenly on everyone's radar. It's solving the exact problems Notion users are tired of dealing with. But how? What's really pulling people away from a tool as popular as Notion to Obsidian? One of the most common complaints from long-term Notion users revolves around performance, especially as their workspaces grow. When you first start, everything feels snappy, but once you've built a system with hundreds of pages and databases containing thousands of entries, a noticeable lag can creep in. Pages take a moment to load, searches aren't instant, and complex database views with multiple filters and rollups can feel like they're wading through molasses, the reason for this slowdown is rooted in Notion's architecture. It's a cloud-based platform where every piece of content is a block stored in a remote database. When you open a page, Notion has to query its servers, fetch all the relevant blocks, render the content, and process any linked relations, which takes time. Obsidian completely sidesteps this problem because of its local first design principle. Your notes aren't stored on a distant server. They are plain text markdown files sitting in a folder on your own computer. This means there is virtually no loading time. Opening a note is as fast as opening a text file, and searching across thousands of notes is an instantaneous local operation. Because everything is processed on your device, the performance remains consistently fast, regardless of how large your knowledge base becomes. This speed and reliability create a frictionless experience that many find essential for deep thinking and quick capture. Beyond speed, a more profound reason for the shift lies in the philosophical difference between how these tools organize information. Notion is built on a hierarchical model, much like a digital filing cabinet. You create a page and that page lives inside another page or within a structured database. This is incredibly effective for systematic work like project management or building a company wiki, where a clear, top-down order is necessary. However, many users find this structure rigid and confining for their personal knowledge. Ideas often don't fit neatly into a single folder, and the hierarchical system makes it difficult to discover serendipitous connections between notes stored in different parts of your workspace. Obsidian, in contrast, is designed around the concept of networked thinking. Its core organizational tool isn't a folder, but a link. By using simple double bracket links, you can easily connect notes and create a web of interconnected ideas that mirrors the associative nature of the human brain. This gets even better with features like bi-directional linking. It not only shows which notes you've linked to, but also which notes are linking back to the one you're viewing. The most powerful visualization of this is the graph view, which displays your entire knowledge base as a constellation of nodes and connections. This visual map allows you to see emergent patterns and relationships you would never find in a linear list of files, which makes it a powerful tool for researchers, writers, and anyone whose work relies on creative synthesis. Notion's greatest strength, its powerful databases, can also be its greatest weakness for some users. While databases allow for incredible customization with properties, tags, views, and formulas, they also introduce significant maintenance overhead. Many people report spending more time managing their Notion system than actually doing the work it's meant to support. They become Notion admins, constantly tweaking properties and adjusting views, a form of productive procrastination that can feel like busy work. For someone who just wants to capture a thought or write an article, the pressure to fit that information into a predefined database structure can be a creative bottleneck. Obsidian offers a much simpler starting point. At its core, it's just you and a plain text file. There is zero initial overhead. You just start writing. 
If you want to make it more advanced, you can add features later, and this is achieved through an extensive ecosystem of community-built plugins. If you decide you need calendar functionality or Kanban boards, you can install plugins to add them. This principle of progressive complexity is a key draw. You start with the simplest possible tool and build it into a personalized powerhouse that perfectly fits your workflow without being burdened by features you don't use. For anyone who works while traveling or in areas with spotty internet, reliable offline access is non-negotiable. This has historically been a major pain point for Notion users. While Notion has introduced an offline mode, it's often described as limited and unreliable. Access isn't automatic. You often have to manually save pages for offline use on a per-device basis. And even then, features that rely on live data, like embeds or complex database views, may not function properly. Being locked out of your own brain because of a poor Wi-Fi connection is a frustrating experience that has driven many to seek alternatives. This is another area where Obsidian's local-first architecture provides a clear advantage. Since all your files are stored directly on your device, Obsidian is offline by default. Its full functionality, creating, editing, linking, and searching, is always available, with or without an internet connection. Cloud synchronization is treated as an optional add-on service, not a fundamental requirement for the app to work. For users who value data sovereignty and absolute reliability, this distinction is critical. While both tools offer generous free plans for personal use, the economic models diverge significantly when it comes to teams and professional use. Notion operates on a standard SaaS model, where you pay a per-user, per-month fee for premium features. The Plus plan costs around $10 per user per month, while the Business plan is closer to $20. These aren't big numbers. But once your team starts to get bigger, this cost can add up quickly, becoming a significant monthly expense. Obsidian's pricing philosophy is different. The core software is free for personal use. For professional use in a company, there's a flat annual fee of $50 per user. The only recurring costs are for optional services. If you want the official end-to-end -end encrypted sync service, it costs between $4 and $8 per month, and publishing a site is another optional fee. This model can be far more cost-effective for teams, especially those who may not need the real-time, built-in collaboration that is central to Notion's value proposition. They are paying for a tool and optional services, not for seats in a mandatory cloud ecosystem. Ultimately, this isn't a zero-sum game where one tool must be declared the winner. In fact, a lot of experienced users have found that the best setup is to use both tools together, where it's important to use. This way, you get the best of what each one offers while avoiding their downsides. Think of it like this. Obsidian is your private workshop. It's fast, works offline, and is perfect for writing down ideas, connecting notes, doing research, and keeping a personal journal. This is where your rough ideas start and grow. Then you have Notion, which is more like your public showroom or team space. When your ideas are ready to share, you can put them in Notion. It's great for team projects, Kanban boards, company wikis, client dashboards, and sharing polished documents online. Since Obsidian is free for personal use, you can build your private system without spending anything and then use Notion's free or paid plans for the teamwork and organization it's best at. The shift from Notion to Obsidian isn't about abandoning a good tool. It's about choosing the right philosophy for the job. It reflects a growing desire for speed, ownership, and a system that adapts to our minds, rather than forcing our minds to adapt to a system. So take a look at your own workflow. Where are your friction points? Let us know in the comments which approach resonates more with you and how you organize your digital life. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to get more videos like this.